What's up, nerds? It's Jelly Skelly. We are back with more Star Trek Resurgence. And let's see, last time we met our dual protagonists. And we got on the ship, and the captain told us about some sus business that they were doing, and how some people died, etc. And how I'm like, I'm kind of leery of this whole like warp experiment if they try to do it again. Sup. Quick introductions. This is Lieutenant Handar, our helmsman, one of the best in the business. One of <laughs> what he lacks in humility, he more than makes up for in ability. A pleasure to meet you, Commander. Likewise. The Bajoran guy. Commander Westbrook, our chief science officer. I've come to rely on his expert counsel on a regular basis. Pleasure. Commander Rydak, it is such an honor to meet you. This is our tactical officer, Lieutenant Bedrosian. We've been looking forward to meeting you for about as long as I can remember. Bedrosian? I've been following your career for quite some time. Interesting. And I look forward to learning as much as I can from you. You've heard of me? You've heard of me? Well, I have to admit, one of the reasons I've followed your career is because you're part Kobliad. Because of what you've overcome. Hmm. Starfleet stands up for people who can't defend themselves. And you one of those people once but since then you've done so much to protect others who need it I really admire that so you've been something of an inspiration to me not that I've done anything close to what you've done but you where's the flirt the button to strive for you really do know a thing or two about me I'm glad I could inspire you but it's important to chart your own path Thanks. You can count on it. Chart your path to my quarters later, girl. Of course, you've already met Commander Irmar. Please do everything you can to make Commander Rydek feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. Have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. Mm -hmm. If they drag your feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. Ooh. Sit in the captain's chair when ready. Okay. Um. Oh. Full of crew that are now my responsibility. God, master system display. Ah. Oh. Look, I'm just taking it in. I'm just savoring it a little bit, okay? Like, like, don't, like, let, let me have this. Alright? I don't know how I feel. Okay, so I know transparent aluminum is a thing, like, in Star Trek and in real life. So I can be okay with having a big-ass glass window instead of a view screen. It makes a degree of sense. Impressive range of view. I mean, that's the question. Is it a window? The helm. I assume it is. is a refitted Centaur class, meaning it's capable of quick maneuvers. I told you, Centaur. What you can do. Centaur refit. That's interesting. Operations. Mm-hmm. Supplies. There's a lot to keep track of on a starship. Yeah. Good thing we have Commander Ermar. It's not glorious work, but it needs to be done. I feel like since I'm in IT, that's my like real life job. <clears throat> Commander, Chief Engineer Chovak needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go ahead. Okay. Permission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. Well, that's not great. 
And the structural integrity field is basically holds the ship together. Uh, it, that's why you can have weird ass shaped ships that don't make a lot of sense. Oh man, I wish I could look. Can I look around? Can I look around? Oh my god. The nacelle up there? Oh. <laughs> when I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. But this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you nerd. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? Well, I mean... I mean, Starfleet is noble and all. But it's still a machine. I am more than that. And so are you. I mean, like, how are you going to have a socialist utopia if people aren't willing to do what needs to be done? You know? It's like, damn, I'm a little wet, bro. You can't talk like that while we're out on the hull of a ship. Okay, what do we got? Right trigger, left stick. Push up the left stick. It's very blurry, but it's I could tell it was left stick. Alright, what are we looking for here? Calibration tool. Beginning recalibration. Alright, don't y'all have work bees and shit? Turn the nodes to center the circular indicators. Uh. Uh. Careful. Too much action and harmonic will deflect the alignment. Uh, fuck. This is weird. So we gotta kind of nudge it. Uh, this is weird, y'all. Okay, I did it though. Looks good. That wasn't so hard. Why didn't they have a work bee do it? I guess I don't know. What's the beeping for? Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Something wrong. Yes, I am the chief science officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. Let's be diplomatic. Impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. Okay. I'm curious, though. A Kobliad, or... Half in your case. Interesting. It's Half Kobliad. For first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation, and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? Uh, that's kind of racist, dude. What about people like needing food and oxygen and stuff like that? It's no different from any other biological need. Without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst case scenario. But not outside the realm of possibility. In my entire career, it's never been an issue or caused the slightest problem. And I don't expect this to be any different. I was just curious, that's all. Listen, 
Can I be blunt, Commander? Weird racist guy. To stop now. <laughs> Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. Yes, you were gay for him, I get it. But the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. Someone has to do it. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. Thanks. Unusual. Unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. That's not a good sound. The ship's not happy. Uh, y'all. Y'all need to hustle your bustle. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the. Red alert. Aye. Evacuating main gangway and retracting. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? Here we go. The impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shield. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's uh, right, which is why we need to send power to our shield. Shields up. Bedrosia, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a heading. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Can you not right now, Xbox? Thanks. Oh uh, shit! 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 Heading locked. Raise shields. Yeah, cause we got people on the on on the hull too. This is it. All hands, brace for impact. Okay. Experienced a surge of radiation. Oof. Oh, you don't say. This radiation supercharged the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. Oh, fun. Primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port in a cell plasma regulator. Oh, fun. I will say this is like playing an actual episode. Do you see the override for the level one fail safe circuits? All right, left stick and right trigger. Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. Okay. Working on it. There we go. Are you sure? I am registering some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Ah, oh, fuck me. Flip some chips. There we go. Safes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. 
Heads up, Carter. What is that? One of the discharges coalesced. It's coming right toward us. Ah, shit. I'm gonna try to disrupt it with my phaser. Use Y to equip your phaser. Left trigger to aim, right trigger to fire. Nice. Nice shooting, Tex. We gotta climb up the pylon. Not that there's really an up, but you know. Mm-hmm. Oh fucking, we got a timer. Oh, here we go. Get ready. No, no, no. These don't matter, we cut through. Only if it's directly in our path do we need to worry about it. Bro, get out of my path. Ugh, okay, so that... Your suit. Energy dampening is down to sixty percent. Okay, we're good. We just gotta hurry. I guess I was wrong about like, don't worry about the ones that aren't directly in our path. We're at the regulator. Opening the access panel. Now halting the EPS flow to the port in the cell. We have little time before it causes an overload in the engine. I am on it. I'm on it. Come on, register my input. EPS manifold adjusters reset to neutral. Okay, now what? Uh, what am I doing here? The EPS lines to the port warp engine are back in balance. Oh, okay, I did it. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, You're not gonna have time for that, I don't think. Oh, piss. That's not good. Y'all need to get inside. <laughs> get down. Here's the bridge. We just lost the docking plan. We've got a lot of debris coming down. All vibrations, too. We can't finish the EPS regulation in these conditions. Please advise. We have to release the ship from that other docking clamp or the hull will be ripped apart. Yep. There's a problem. The clamps are supposed to disengage automatically in an emergency, but it's not working. Not working? What are our options? The docking clamps are fitted with exploding bolts for an emergency release. Okay. We've got crew out there. That'd be like setting off a bomb next to them. Maybe there's another way. Starbase is hailing us. Put them through. Resolute, the remaining mooring arm is failing. You need to disengage from the Starbase now. The damage to the station will be catastrophic. We have crew outside and are looking for the we safest way We have people waiting. on this station. If that mooring arm breaks, we could lose dozens of crew. Commander, hear me out. Reverse the polarity of the hull, which theoretically will repel the docking clamps and repel the engineering crew right off the hull into the storm. This is Captain Solano. Put me on screen. Go ahead. Captain, we have a situation. Commander, what are you doing? Blow the bolts on the docking clamp. The captain doesn't know the whole story. I'm giving you an order. Jara? Captain, you brought me here because you trusted me. Can you trust me now? You better be sure you make the right decision. I hope I am. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There are 
is protocol. And there are lives. Starbase, stand by. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Prepare crew. Yeah. This is acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse hull polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Fuck. Three. Two. One. Mark. Critical condition. We are moments from primary system failure. Ooh. I wasn't expecting this much tension. Oh shit. Come on. Put your ass into it. I'm putting my ass into it. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, left stick, left stick, left stick. Come on, left stick. Left stick and right stick. Whew. Oof. That was more exciting than I was expecting. Get her. Get her. I got you. Petty Officer Ensilar's hurt and unconscious. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed. You are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc if you approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. An auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. All right. Ooh. Oh. All right. So so far, this I'm very into this. Holy shit. Can they not? I guess there's too much going on. They can't beam them out. Because that was actually my first thought. Second thought was, well, that wouldn't make for a fun video game or an interesting story. You go first. What? Let me save your neck this time. You just have a. You do have a concussion. Time to fight me on this. Get your ass in there. Your ass is concussed. Get in there. Relatively. Whew. I was not prepared. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, so... Hold on. It just saved. And, and I need a minute. Oh my god. That was more intense than I was expecting. But furious that defied his orders should not blow the bolts on the docking clamps. 
<sighs> Meyer Jara's instincts to protect the crew and Starbase order to disengage the clamps. She thought highly of Jara's efforts to explain the complexity of the situation to Captain Solano, and she was relieved when Jara defied the, cap the captain's orders, made her own command decision. Westbrook respected Jara's inclination to protect the crew and Starbase. Da -da -da -da. Explained the complexity. Ultimately, he was thankful. Da -da -da. So they're pretty much all similar. Did not approve of Jara's unwillingness to follow protocol. Who cares? Listen, you can't, you're not going to please everyone, I feel like. All right. Oh, my God. All right. So we're going to, um, it just saved. It showed the little save icon. So we're going to, um, we're going to pick it back up right here in the next one. This has been Star Trek Resurgence. I'm Jelly Skelly. Holy shit. This game. Um, live long and prosper. Drink water. Take care of yourself. Tell people you love them. I love you all. Bye. Mwah.